Perhaps the most unusual and strangest volcano in the world is called Oldowinyo Lengai, which means Mountain of God in Maasai, and it is located in northern Tanzania and East Africa. It has been showing signs of higher than normal uplift from 2022 until now, which may be a precursor to a potentially large ash eruption in the future. Oldowinyo Lengai is a 500,000 year old stratovolcano that is 2,962 meters or 9,718 feet above sea level, and it rises 5,900 feet above the surrounding plain. Old Oinulengai Volcano is part of the Gregory Rift Branch, which is at the middle part of the east part of the East African Rift System. The East African Rift System began to form over 22 million years ago, and the north part of the Gregory Rift Branch started to spread a little more than 10 million years ago and propagated to the south near Old Oinulengai about a million years ago and continues to widen at a rate of three millimeters or an eighth of an inch per year. The summit of Old Oinulengai contains two craters, the active north crater and the inactive south crater. The volcano formed in two stages. The first stage was 500,000 years ago, which erupted hotter phonolite lava. And the second, which is the current stage, started about 15,000 years ago and yields lower temperature natural carbonatite lava and the occasional silicate explosive eruption. The eruptive activity at Old Unilangai consists of alternating periods of long-term, which may last for years, of low-level natural carbonatite activity. And sporadic, which is about four times a century, explosive silicate eruptions, such as in 1933, 1965, 1983, and as recently as 2008. Lengai is the only volcano in the world that erupts high alkali, lava called natural carbonatite lava which ranges from 480 to 600 degrees celsius or 900 degrees to 1100 degrees fahrenheit and it flows like water and it is the coolest lava on earth whereas basalt lava like in hawaii or iceland is around 1200 degrees celsius or 2200 degrees fahrenheit the normal lava effusive rate during periods of non-explosive eruptions at lingai is around 0.3 cubic meters of lava per second which is very low High alkali content natural carbonatite lava contains primarily of sodium, potassium, and calcium containing minerals such as neorite and gregoryrite, as well as other minor minerals. As soon as natural carbonatite lava cools, depending on the humidity, it begins to turn brown after a couple of hours upon exposure to the atmosphere, and eventually turns to white dust within weeks. Natural carbonatite lava also absorbs moisture from the air that facilitates its breakdown. Here is a comparison photo of an active lava flow in 2001 and the same area a year later. Note the change to a dusty substance. If one were to obtain freshly cooled natural carbonatite lava, it must be initially stored in a dry container, then kept eventually under an inert atmosphere to prevent further breakdown. Old Lingai's lava does not glow red during the day, but appears black like either mud or oil. However, at nighttime, the lava glows a dull red or orange and its brightness can vary depending on the temperature of the lava. Here is nighttime footage of Lengai's lava I took in the summer of 2001. Here the lava was bright and very noticeable at night as well as during twilight. The lava temperature at the time may have been around between 550 to 600 degrees Celsius or around 950 to 1000 50 degrees Fahrenheit. However, on my second visit, the lava at night was not as bright as it was in 2001. The lava at that time, in 2002, may have been about 100 to 150 degrees Fahrenheit cooler at a temperature around 480 to 520 degrees Celsius or 900 to 970 degrees Fahrenheit. It was not even visible at twilight like the year before. This night footage shows the actual color of an eerie dark red lava eruption that was recorded in the summer of 2002. Now here you can see the difference between 2002 and the previous year with the lava brightness. However, the video doesn't do it justice. The brightness of the lava is equivalent of a burning charcoal ember after the flames have stopped. At night it is visible, but during the day not so much. Although when your Lingai volcano is always in a state of low level eruption, mainly in the form of a small persistent lava lake that remains inside the cones of the crater. 
In 2007 and 2008, a series of violent ash eruptions occurred at the volcano, causing ash fall around the volcano. Prior to the violent eruptions of 2007 and 2008, the eruptions were limited to small cones inside the crater, and since 1966, the crater floor has been slowly filling with lava. The current crater is around 600 feet or around 180 meters in diameter, and is slowly filling up with lava, just like many times before. Here is what Old Dominion Lingai's crater floor looked like before the 2007 eruptions, and here is what it looks like today. Now before 2007, the crater floor was not too far below the crater rim. It was easy to reach. At that time, the crater floor was about 1,200 feet wide or around 350 meters. Observations and studies of the volcano have been very few and far between before 2016 due to its remote location and the difficulty to climb it. To climb the volcano, one must start early in the morning around 3 o'clock to start the ascent, and it takes anywhere from 7 to 10 hours depending on the shape of the person. The angle starts at anywhere from 30 degrees at the base to nearly 60 degrees when approaching the summit. Although the plumbing system of the magma chambers under Lingai is poorly understood, however with new recent data suggests that there may be multiple magma chambers under Lingai taking up a large area including a small local magma chamber immediately under the mountain. So why does Old Union Lingai erupt this rare type of lava? Deeper magma chambers containing hotter phonolite or low silica content lava causes the lighter alkali materials to separate and rise, thus causing the natural carbonatite lava to erupt. However, lab experiments have shown this may or may not be the case. Another theory states that older England guy natural carbonatite lava involves the expulsion of mobile alkaline carbon dioxide rich fluids in the form of a condensate. According to a recent report by Alex Strikson, fluid magmas separates at a depth from cooling low alkali carbonatite in the small shallow magma chamber of the volcano. This fluid reacts with previously crystallized solids and leaves small pockets of carbonatite liquid behind in an area above the magma chamber. Volatiles containing carbon dioxide and water will react with the underground rock and be lost before it reaches the surface. When the hotter silicate magma replenishes the primary magma chamber under the volcano, previously deposited natural carbonatite lava, liquid, and solid parts could be remelted and reactivated to form many natural carbonatite magma pockets just a few meters wide either within or just under the volcano. Some test samples of natural carbonatite lava from Lingai has been known to contain small amounts of silica. The natural carbonatite lava along with associated gases travels from the tiny natural carbonatite mini magma chambers inside the volcano and travels upward to erupt at the surface. The loss of water and carbon dioxide due to some reactions with the underground rock turns the fluid into natural carbonatite melt. The resulting natural carbonatite lava's low temperature liquid will contain high alkali content minerals that one would see erupting at the surface at Old Onyilangai today. This is just one of two theories of how natural carbonatite lava originates, but more studies are needed to get a concrete picture of what goes on under the Old Onyilangai volcano. A team from Virginia Tech installed six sensors on the flanks of Old Onyilangai to collect high precision data from the global navigational satellite system. The seismometers placed on the volcano also monitors local earthquakes as well as inflation. Computer models from the satellite data were used to detect volcanic inflation of the magma reservoir under Lengai. The team searched seven years of consistent satellite data for signals associated with the transient rapid uplift or inflation that occurred between March 2022 and December 2022, and then a slower period of uplift all the way through August 2023. Inflation happens when magma rises into the magma chamber and causes the volcano to expand outward like a balloon. Inflation, if it does not stop, will reach a critical phase where an eruption may happen. Satellite data indicates that a magma reservoir about 1.4 miles or 2.3 kilometers beneath Old Onyilangai's crater began swelling in March 2022, suddenly stretching the Earth's crust above it. This is recent information and more data is needed as the volcano is a tourist destination and safety is paramount. Before the 2008 explosive eruption at Lingai that blew out the crater floor, it wasn't uncommon for people like me to go camping inside the crater while it was erupting for days at a time. In the summer of 2002, our guides were camping on the east part of the crater where on the first night of the eruption, 
it sent a torrent of lava toward the guide's tent and the lava went around the small stone wall and into the tent injuring one of our guides. The lava took out our water and food supply. The guide had to leave due to minor injuries from the lava entering the tent. A few people from our expedition ended up leaving early as they had enough, but some of us remained. Due to the constant threat of lava, the remaining expedition members had to have lava watch at night to ensure our camp was not threatened by lava. We even had to remove our tents to the southern part of the crater in order to avoid the lava. 